the stamp market. I'm here today to share with you how to customize some of your butterflies using our new butterfly shaker die. And we have a butterfly botanicals that coordinates. Pick your favorite color palette, use another coordinating die, and you can create so many different looks. Each of them I've added just to a basic four and a quarter by five and a half card front. This is the cutest surprise to send in the mail. It's frame worthy and so adorable. So grab a cold drink and join me for five. Okay, I'm gonna start by showing you how to assemble a basic shaker if you haven't created one of ours. We love this process and it's just very fun and rewarding. So we're going to start by using our butterfly shaker die, which has two pieces, the outline, which creates the shaker and the base with a little body. And then we have our botanical blooms layering stencil. And this is three layers. And if you haven't used these, um, these really pack a punch and they're so much more cost effective than three full size stamps. So we have the vine, the floral, and then the detail layer. Really, this one's super easy to line up and you just can get some amazing colorful backgrounds. And then I am going to use the gift bag greetings. Um, this coordinates with our gift bag die, but don't let that stop you. This is just a really great set with a little bit of movement. You don't have to use it with the die. You could just simply cut out a banner and I'll show you a simple option for that if you don't want to have to purchase the um, large die because this is the coordinating die that has the banner in it. I understand that's a whole other price point. So if you don't want to purchase this to cut these out, I'll just show you a simple trick. But if you have this um, and you got this from our new release, you'll love being able to use this banner with other projects because this stamp set is just super cute and great and easy to work with. I will record this video in real time other than the die cutting pieces. I'm simply going to run this through the die cut machine. We'll be cutting one of the base and five of the outline pieces. Okay, when you're done die cutting, you're gonna have the base and you're gonna have five of these little outlines. Just set those outlines aside for a second. I'm gonna grab my scratch pad. So we sell these awesome scratch pads. You can stencil, jot notes, test color combinations. Okay, you're simply gonna add a touch of adhesive to the back, either a semi-permanent or very little amount if you just have permanent. That just holds it in place and keeps it from moving around. And then we're going to grab the base piece of our stencil. And I love this stencil design because not only does it have overall um, pattern, these large vines look so cute in the butterfly. And I'm gonna show you guys a reason why I love these detail brushes for this type of stenciling because you can add more color without it bleeding and mixing your colors. So we're going to start with Julep. So I have a larger, I have our largest size. I'm gonna place down my tacky tile which you can get in the shop and these just hold your ink pads in place so they don't move around on you. And I just kind of like to test out how much ink I have and really make sure on the side here, get that good and blended into the brush. And then I'm going to take this vine and I'm going to place it on the wing and just start blending some of that julep into just the vine area. There's a little dot as well, but that is for the center of the flower. Okay, and then I'm going, as you can see when I remove that, we have our nice little vine. Then I'm gonna take the same exact part of the stencil and put it over the right wing. Now, if you wanted to just make this easy on yourself, you could just lay the stencil pattern down and get whatever Part of the pattern. I just liked the movement of the vine on the wings. So we're going to set that aside and we're going to grab our floral wing. Okay, this is fairly easy to line up. You'll set the flowers just above the stems and then I want to add a few different colors and this is where it's nice to have these tiny brushes. They're really tiny and I'll show you why I love them. Let's start with the breeze because these have a flower, these have a center that I want to be yellow. And if I mix the yellow and green ink, it would make the yellow and blue, it would make green. So this way I can just add color to the outer part of the floor. So using peach, I'm just gonna add it to a couple of the flowers as well. Now this one, it won't matter, just fill that in. But when we get to the solid flower over here, Then I'm going to take blush and do the same thing. Just add it to the outer edge of the stencil. Okay, that's the look that you get. Then you're going to bring back your vine piece, which has the centers for the flowers.
and using citrine, I'm gonna go ahead and really blend in that color. Now we're gonna go ahead and do create the same look on the right wing, and I'll just fast forward that so you can still see the process. And there you have a stenciled background. Okay, we're gonna take emerald and the other colors and fill in their detail layers. Now I'm gonna zoom in so you can really see this part. We're gonna take emerald. The beauty of stencils is they're also very forgiving. They don't have to be such perfect placement. Once you get your sequins and your greeting in place, it's okay if you have a few areas that don't line up perfect. So. Now, if you don't have a variety of colors like darks to lights, you can just use the same ink color and go over it multiple times and it will give you the same effect. So, as you can see, we've started to add that detail layer into the leaves. I keep a handy reusable paper towel. I just get these on Amazon. I love that they have pink, they're so cute. And I just clean that off. And I love it because it's not too wet and it dries really fast and then you can get right back to your stenciling. So line that up over the flowers. Okay, we're gonna do the peach. Just to really make sure that that extra layer is dark. Then you're going to do it on the other side. Okay, next up we need to do the blush, which is right here. Okay, and then our blue. That extra layer of detail just really makes that stencil pop. Okay, so let's clean up. We're gonna go ahead and add the outline so you can add your confetti. Now the easiest way I find to do this is just have that little um, rag on hand and you'll need that just for your fingertips because what I like to do is I love using the berry glue, the berry art glue, and I just do tiny little dots all the way around the shaker outline. And then I just use my finger to lightly, lightly spread that out. And then I just wipe my hand really quick on the rag. And because it's not very wet and it's just, it's just an easy way to clean up and not have sticky hands and it works perfect. So now we're just gonna keep building layer on layer. I'm gonna do that five times and then we'll add the confetti. Okay, now you've created the perfect little pocket with an edge that holds those shaker bits in place. So once you've done that, I'm gonna just clean up my glue here. Okay, I'm simply going to take some of our crystal confetti, which are just a really high shine, clear sequin, and we're just gonna go ahead and drop those in and really fill that up. You could make your own confetti, you could use cute flowers or little beads, give it a little more interest, but I just love the simplicity with that stencil design. Next up, you need to die cut a base with the acetate and another outline from the white. This is where you can customize your butterfly though. If you want like a pink outline or a green or a blue, this is where you would die cut in whatever color you prefer. So we're going to go ahead and glue this down. I found the easiest way is to put the glue on the base. Okay, and 
you want to be fast and straight down there you go now obviously you can see the glue is not very cute and that is the purpose for die cutting a top layer just finishes it off really nice you really want to make sure that's lined up if you and there you have your base of your shaker okay using the little body and a piece of blush cardstock I'm just gonna run this through my little sidekick I think this is the perfect little machine if you are just die cutting. Okay, let's just add that to the center. And this would actually be so cute if you wanted to add texture to the butterfly center, you could wrap it with some embroidery floss. It would be so cute to give it just that extra dimension and texture. There you have the base of that shaker. Now let's add the greeting. Okay, so I'm gonna get out my stamp set and I think we're gonna do a different greeting. Let's do happy birthday. Actually, let's do two, my friend. Okay, now because you guys know how to line up a die and a stamp, see how these line up perfect, you can simply do that. But because I've already shown that here on this one, I'm just gonna show you how to stamp this and add your own dimension. Okay, using embossing ink, I'm just going to tap that and make sure you leave some space on the edge. So I'm just going to stamp it right there. If you like the tone on tone look, you can stop there. I'm going to use Detail White Embossing Powder. Okay, to cut this, you'll want some longer scissors. It will just give you a smoother line. Make sure you stay away from the edges. And then you're just going to follow the motion of the stamp, turning your paper and not your scissors. That will just help you create a better Okay, and then you can just snip down the middle and then I just do two, like a V clip and it creates a cute tail. Doesn't have the same layers, but you can really achieve, oops, got a pin stuck. You can really achieve the same look. Um, if you don't have that done. And remember, dimension is life, right? So we simply add some foam tape there and you have a very similar look without that die. So there you have your first little shaker butterfly and then I'm gonna show you how to add this to a card front. Okay, we're just doing standard card size, so cutting out five and a half. And then I just simply fold it and create my score line. That way, always using a bone folder makes all the difference, keeping your cards nice and flat. Now, I want a little extra dimension for this card, so let's go ahead. I've got, I've got our blush card stock, and I want to go, it was five and a half, I want to take an eighth of an inch off. So, five and three eighths. It was four and a quarter front, so I want to do four and an eighth. And you're simply going to mat that in place. Okay, using some foam, I'm just gonna center that on the card front. Just gives it a nice little white border that ties in the card. Again, you can choose here either to glue it directly down to the card front, or you could add even more dimension. Now, if you want to give the card a little extra pop, you could go ahead and stencil a little pattern on that. I'm going to keep it simple and clean. Okay, and I have die cut and glued together one of our rip envelopes, our standard size. I'm going to slide that inside, and there you have the perfect little shaker for the mail. It's a little bulky. You might have to pay a little extra, but so cute and so worth it. Okay, next up, I'm gonna show you guys how to use our Butterfly and Botanicals die and how to turn that into a shaker as well to kind of mix and match some different looks. Okay, so this die is the base wings and the little bottom wings, and they're actually separate pieces so that you can create a more colorful butterfly just with cardstock. And then it has the base layer for the vines, and that even has placement for the flowers. So then you'll simply take the little flower die cut and die cut those in the colors and then lay it on top. It makes it really easy to get those flowers perfectly placed and add a lot of color 
to your butterfly. <clears throat> now I'm gonna show you how this works with the shaker die and how you can really add that extra dimension. Okay, I have die cut the vines in julep and then the flowers in peach and blush with a little bit of breeze and then the centers are just out of the citrine. And they're just from the little pieces and those are all nice and together making it easy to die cut and there's actually two in the set so I just run those through a couple times and layer those up. Then you're going to take the five layers of outlines and glue those together. Okay, I've simply added the glue and I'm gonna place that over the top of the butterfly. And there you have a more intricate, colorful butterfly using die cuts. And we're gonna do the same and add the glitter. I actually meant sequins, so let's just sprinkle those in because they're so cute and we love things that are cute and shake. Okay, there you have another way to customize your butterfly shaker. Okay, the next idea is actually creating shaker bits using the die. So simply using the Butterfly and Botanicals, these two pieces, if you run them through, they create little bits of confetti. Now you can go the extra step and add the little centers and put them together, or you can just leave them in confetti bits, which would be super cute either way. Then I've mixed that with some sequins, and it just makes the cutest shaker bits. And I've added a little colorful frame around the butterfly. And then you can add that easily to a tag or a card. Okay, last idea. I'm gonna show you how to just coordinate this with any of your floral dyes or a dye that has a pattern that you love. I've just created using a dark base. This is Julep. And then I'm using our new trio of Daisy's dye. I love this dye, it's so versatile, I have to say. If I were picking favorites, this might be it. Um, only because I love a dye that is just so versatile. So I've actually die cut like seven out of the white. And they're kind of like a little daisy shape and I'm just kind of start placing them on the butterfly in an overall pattern. I do just switch that up a little bit. I think we might need one more over here. Okay, I've got one more. Let's just start gluing those down. You want them to kind of come off the edge so it looks like you've created a pattern. And then I'll show you how to trim these perfect every time when you're adding them to a die cut shape. Wipe that up. Okay, so you're simply going to fit your die cut right back into the die, making sure that's lined up and you can feel it kind of nest right inside. I'm going to use a little artist tape and run that through the die cut machine. And it cuts the edges perfect for you. Now, this would be so cute. You could just leave this like a butterfly and use this on a card front. You wouldn't have to turn it into a shaker. And then let's just add some colorful centers to the flowers. Quickly adding a dollop of glue to each center. I'm going to alternate between citrine, peachy, and blush for my centers. Look how cute you have a fun floral butterfly. Add your shaker bits for that extra sparkle. Now you've created a fun, customized pattern using that daisy to create a bold floral print. So cute and fun. Thank you so much today for joining me. I hope that you walk away feeling like you learned something new that you're inspired to go create with these new butterfly dives. If you like this video below, be sure to leave us a like, say hello in the comments, we'd love hearing from you. Happy crafting, friends.